Welcome to our lecture online. So here's our first example of how to solve a rational inequality. And notice that rational inequalities tend to be a little bit more difficult to solve than quadratic inequalities because we're dealing with fractions and that always makes things more difficult. But step number one, we need to move everything over to one side and have a zero on the other side. So this is going to move to the left side. So this will be written as 1 over x minus 1 minus 2 over x plus 1 is less than or equal to 0. Now, the next thing we need to do is to place that on a single fraction or into a, in the format of a single fraction. So we need to find the common denominator, which is x minus 1 times x plus 1. So what we're going to do here is write this as 1 over x minus 1, like this, minus 2 over x plus 1, like this, less than or equal to 0. And the reason why I wrote it like that is because what we need to do here is we need to multiply the denominator by x plus 1. And of course, we need to do the same to the denominator. And here we're going to multiply the denominator by x minus 1, and we need to do the same to the numerator. So that's how we find the common denominator. So we can write that left side into a single fraction, and that's what you're trying to do before you try to solve the rational inequality. So let's do that. So in this case, this becomes x plus 1 minus 2 times x minus 1 over the common denominator of x plus 1 times x minus 1, and that's then less than or equal to 0. So continuing to solve that, we get x plus 1. That's 2x times a minus, that's minus 2x. And that's minus 2 times a minus, that would be plus 2, all divided by x plus 1 times x minus 1, less than or equal to 0. And here we have a minus x plus 3 divided by x plus 1 times x minus 1, is less than or equal to zero. So notice there's a lot of work that we have to do just to get it into the standard form with the expression on the left side as a single fraction and a zero on the right side. Now the next thing we're going to do is to find the critical points. And so we're first going to look at the denominator. So what values for x will make the denominator equal to zero. So notice that when x equals one, one minus one is zero, and when x equals negative one. So in other words, x cannot be equal to negative one, and x cannot equal one. So simply by looking at the denominators, if x minus one, if this expression equals zero, meaning if one minus one equals zero, well, if you have one minus one, that makes it equal to zero, so x cannot equal one, and x cannot equal negative 1 because negative 1 plus 1 equals 0. So those are the two values that will make the denominator equal to 0. So the denominator cannot equal 0, and therefore these are the two values that x cannot be. So those are two of the critical values, the critical points x equals 1 and x equals negative 1 because x cannot equal those values. Now, to f with the numerator, what we're going to do We're going to set the numerator equal to zero. In other words, we're going to make that into an equal sign, and then we can write minus x plus 3 equal to zero, because if the numerator is zero, then the whole fraction is equal to zero. And we're going to solve for this, so minus x equals minus 3, or x equals 3. There's your third critical point. So three critical points. x equals negative 1, x equals 1, and x equals 3 are your three critical points, and we're going to place those on the number line. So let's write all these points down. We have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. Uh, that's good enough right here. So what are they? x equals negative 1. I draw a circle. Notice that will never be filled in because x cannot equal negative 1. x equals 1. Again, that will be an open circle because Again, it cannot equal 1, and x equals 3. Now, first I draw an open circle. Should I color it in? So I go over here and notice that, um, well, it's less than or equal to. So that means that equal to sign means that 3 is included in the solution. So I'll darken up that circle. 3 is part of the solution. Now, notice with three critical points, I have four regions. Region number 1, region number 2, region number 3, and region 
number four. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pick representative values for each of those four regions to see if I get positive or negative for the numerator or the denominator. So, region number one. I'm going to let x equal, how about negative two? Right, so that falls in this region right here, negative two. And if I plug in a negative two here, negative x, but x is a negative two. Negative times a negative two is a positive two, positive 2 plus 3 is equal to 5, that's a positive value. So I get a positive in the numerator divided by, if x is a negative 2, negative 2 plus 1 is a negative number, and negative 2 minus 1 is a negative number, negative times negative gives me positive, so I get a positive in the denominator. And is that e less than or equal to 0? Question mark. Well, it cannot be less than 0 because I have two positive numbers, so the answer is no. So this region is not included. How about the middle one? So there we're lucky because we can let x equal 0. So for region number 2, we, get, we let x equal to 0. If x is equal to 0, I have a positive number in the numerator. And if I let this equal to 0, and that equal to 0, I have plus 1 times a negative 1, that's a negative 1, I'll end up with a negative number in the denominator. Is that less than or equal to 0? Question mark, and the answer is yes, because if one of them is negative, I have a number less than zero, and so therefore that region satisfies the inequality, so region number two is good. How about region number three? I'm going to let x equal, how about the number two? All right, if I do, I get negative two plus three, well, that's still a positive number, so the numerator will be positive, and if I let x equals 2, that's a positive number, and that's a positive number. Positive times positive is positive. So the question is, is that less than or equal to 0? And the answer is no, because a positive number cannot be less than 0. So this region is not included. Finally, region number 4. Let x equal, well, how about the number 4? If we do, notice a negative 4 plus 3, well, that still will be a negative number, so the numerator is negative. And the denominator, that will be 5 times 3, so they're both positive numbers multiplied together. That gives me a positive number. Is that less than or equal to 0? Question mark. And the answer is yes, because if one of them is negative, the, the fraction is less than 0. And so now, that means that this is a valid region as well. So this is not valid, this is not valid, but this region is valid, so let me darken that region up here, and let me darken that region up here, and that goes all the way to positive infinity. So there's two regions that satisfy the inequality. The first region is that negative 1 is less than x, which is less than 1, not included, equal to, and x greater or equal to 3. So that would be the two regions that satisfies inequality. How can we write that differently? Our first region can be written as follows. Negative 1, 1, with parentheses, that means not including the endpoints, and then all values from negative 1 to 1, but not including the endpoints, and, uh, not, oh, including 3, so we use a bracket, because 3 is included, all the way to positive infinity, which is not included, and so that's another way in which we can write the solution set for this particular inequality and that is how it's done.